We're going to do something again different today. Last week we did something different. This week we're going to do something different. But matter of fact, uh, uh, the Lord was speaking to me. That's why. That's one of the reasons why Brandon kept going. I was glad he did because as the Lord was speaking to him, he was speaking to me. And in D.C., as D.C. was speaking, the Lord was speaking to me again. So we're just going to going to forget the PowerPoint today. As a matter of fact, we're going to forget all of that right now. We're just going to we're going to do something entirely different. Uh, amen. God's good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Uh, fresh off the press, about as fresh as you can get. Amen. Again, one of my favorite scriptures of all times. It's one that I go to so, so many times. And <clears throat> as you know, life has been so disheveled and so disheveled in the last six months with Beth, thinking it was a, was a little cyst and it wound up being cancer and thinking it was in her belly button only. And it's all over her body. And, and, and as all that was going through, the, the Lord has been teaching me something and showing me something. And one of the biggest things is, uh, even in worship, is, is, is am I, it's not, am I being pleased? Come on now. It's not, am I being pleased? Is he being pleased? Am I here to be worshipped? Or am I, am I, am I here to be, be, be excuse me, not worshipped? Am I here to, to be saved to, or am I here to worship God? Amen? Yeah, God is an audience of one. He's up there right now, and He's watching us, and He sees us, and He knows us, and He understands us. Better than anybody else. Get your Bibles out. Again, John 14. Huh. John 14. God is so awesome. Now, if everybody was excited about the church as he was, can you imagine what kind of service we'd have today? <laughs> Lee, if you go ahead and show them how to do it, brother. That's right. John 14. As I've been studying and preparing in, in my psychology and studying and preparing and the life coaching and studying and preparing and just pastoring. And then, matter of fact, it's the biggest part of studying and preparing for life, especially life now with Bethany, as I start to see this stuff. When I hear all these conflict reports from the doctors and all this stuff all the time, it's so easy to, to go to one doctor's visit and get discouraged and go to another doctor's visit and get lifted up and go to another one and get discouraged and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, all the stuff they're saying they're going to do and what they have to do. And it just, it just is so overwhelming. And I can't even imagine what Bethany's thinking. You know, but when I know what it does to me. And, and I just think about this. Uh, uh, well, it can't get off your mind because you're always in it. I mean, and sometimes it's easy to back away because you're not always in it. But when you're always in it, you can't back away. There's nowhere to back up to. I mean, it's back up to the wall. There's nowhere else to go. You're in it. So there's a lot of things on y'all today. If you tell me about it, I may feel feel empathy or sympathy or compassion for you now, but once you leave because I'm not in it, it may not stick with me for the rest of the day because I'm not in it. But some of y'all, your backs are against the wall. Because your backs are against the wall, you feel it. And it's something you can't shake, you can't throw down. It's just something that just hits you and hits you hard. And the thing is, it's like a train that just keeps on coming. Amen? So, so this is a very... Crucial night in the life of the apostles. The apostles had they, they come to a party expecting Jesus to set up an earthly reign. Their mama, I mean James and John sent their mama to go see uh, if they can sit on the right hand or the left hand of Jesus in his kingdom. And then Jesus has to get all down and out with them and say, Y'all got this all wrong. Said, said yeah, this is not what you're thinking. And then Peter jumps up and he's talking about, Well, I got this, God. I'm not gonna let you down. I won't do it again. I won't let you down. He said, but before the cock crows three times, you're going to do it. You ever been there? So all this stuff's going on, and then Jesus senses it's no longer party time. It's actually pouting time. And so as he's seeing the things going around him and, and, and things turn, he starts talking to them. So that's what I want y'all to read this with me. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for all that you say and all that you do in our lives, God. I thank you, God, that this day is in your heart, is in your mind, is already played out in your mind. You already see it. You already know. You already knew before we got here who was going to be here. You already had this thing prepared. You already had this thing all under control. All these songs, all this stuff, everything has happened today. It's not by mechanics, but it's by divine appointment and by divine schedule, God, that you're working in our lives. And you're working this morning. Help us, God, not to be discouraged and help us, God, not to have our mind on other things. God, whatever is uh, uh, breaking our focus right now, let us put it aside so we can totally, 100% focus on you and your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You be seated. I only have a name for this. All you think about it is that these disciples... These disciples have been walking with Jesus for three years. Now you got to remember, they walked wherever they went. They, they did not have PA systems. They did not have roadies. They did not have travel vans. They did not have uh, uh, this great big uh, account set up for them so they could have everything for them. They walked literally by faith. They have been with Jesus for three or three and a half years. And these three and a half years have been very special. It almost seemed like a lifetime. Some of y'all in here right now, if I say what you've been going through for the last six months, the last year, the last two years, the last three years. If I ask you how do you feel about that, they'll say it feels like I've been in it all of my life. It feels like the pain is so real and it won't stop. It just keeps cutting and cutting. And cut. And I'm asking God, when is there going to be a break? When is something going to change? When am I going to see you do something, God? And God's waiting to hear, even if it never happens down here, I'm still going to serve you, God. I'm still going to love you, God. I'm still going to witness for you, God. I'm still going to let the world know that there's something special in serving you here, even in the midst of problems, and there's something special coming on the other side. So now let's watch these guys. This, 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 this is three words. The, the first year they were with Jesus, they were settling. They were trying to, you know, get the pecking order going. They were trying to see who was going to do what. And Jesus, because people didn't really know him yet, it was a year of obscurity. So, so Jesus is just getting on board. Jesus is just beginning to move in. And John the Baptist is moving out. Everybody knows about John the Baptist. Now they're hearing about Jesus. And, and, and so they're, they're going back and forth. But even John, who said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. When he's under the gun, he says, Send word to Jesus. Is he the one coming or is there another? Wow, you can't get much better John the Baptist. And even he had doubts. You're obscurity. Seven. Some of y'all, when you were... Running into these problems. Some of y'all when you began to get sick. Some of y'all when y'all began to come in all kinds of problems on your job with your family or in your own life. You were settling. You were trying to get in it. To try to, to, to adjust yourself. To, to fit in. To, to find things get a little bit easier. And then the, the second year. Settled. Now Jesus is popular. Everybody likes him now. He's the man. I mean, we've seen him feed 5,000. We've seen him uh, raise the dead. We've seen all this stuff. And so we're settled now because we know who we're serving and we know that he's got this and we trust him and uh, he's going to set up an earthly kingdom and he's going to fix everything right down here just like it should be fixed. I know nobody in here has ever thought that. That God's going to fix your problem just like you would right down here before you leave this earth. Everything's going to be fine and dandy. There's going to be a kingdom down here for you. I used to think that way. And then life hit me right below the bill. And I began to know then, no, 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 no. That's not how it works. Yes, there's stuff down here. Yes, you're blessed down here. Yes, you can do things down here. But this is not where it's at. 
free from going to the funeral home, but we seem to want to get to heaven. If I want somebody looking like they're manic, depressive, and crazy, we are. God, I can't wait to get to heaven. Just don't let me die. I got news for you. The Sunday school teacher was asking children, what do you got to do to get to heaven? And they were talking about, I got to be saved. And some said, you know, this. and then little Johnny, you got to be saved. Little Mary, you got to be saved. Little then little Johnny says, what do you got to do to get to heaven? He said, you got to be dead. We look down here, respect everything, just we, we just pray and we seek and we trust and, and we got these guys on TV that honestly I've watched it. Every morning I get up, I hear it. You send your thousand dollar pledge and you watch what God does for you. Every morning of my life I hear that. And every morning of my life I say, if I'm gonna pledge a thousand dollars, it's going to my local church. Where I know where it's going. Not to some guy that I know found out he's driving three Bentleys. Yes. But watch this stuff. And they get everything's gonna be good. Everything's gonna be these guys are settled now. Now the settling is over. They are settled. Some of us in here, right when we were settled. Came the third year. Jesus first was obscured, it was up to obscurity. The second year, it was popularity. The third year was hatred. They hated him. Religion hated him because he was taking away their power. The Roman government hated him because he was taking away their power and authority. And so the government was against him. The, 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 the religious people were against him. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, all of them were against him. And so now they're trying to plot a way to kill him. So, there was the year of unsettling. Some of us in here have had the unsettling. Then there's the year of the settling. Everybody settle down. We got a good ministry going. We got everything going good. I got a house. I got a wife. I got kids. Everything's looking good. I'm going to church on Sunday. I go sometimes during the week. Maybe not. You know, I, I'll take care of God when, you know, when, when, when I feel like it, blah, blah, blah. But I'm set up. Everything's good. And then just like with Jesus, literally, all hell breaks loose. And you wonder, wait a minute, God. It took me a long time from, getting from, from settling to settle, and now I'm settled. And now because I'm settled, everything should be good, but now all of a sudden I'm unsettled. What's going on, God? What's happening? This is what happened here. They were with God. They thought it was going good. They weren't his right hand men. They went around casting out demons. They went around doing miracles. They had all this stuff going on down here. And things were looking good. And then Jesus says, hold on, fellas. Y'all got it all wrong. You got this thing all out of order. He said, y'all were looking down when you should be looking up. Y'all are looking for something, something that you can put your hands on. I'm trying to show you something you can't even touch down here. And you're talking about something that's going to make you feel good down here. And I'm talking about something that's going to make you feel good forever. Look at the temple, and I'm looking at eternal. And so he says, watch this. He sees him now, because now all of a sudden the party's dying now. He's already talking about somebody's going to betray him. Judas has come up, and he says, what you do, do quickly. And Judas goes out and get ready to betray him. He's going to get his pieces of silver and come back, and they're going to lead him in the garden to where they're at so he can get Jesus. And so all this stuff is going down. Behind the scenes, bad stuff's happening. Everybody's feeling it. The dark cloud. Because now the settled has become unsettled. Some of y'all are here right now. And you're feeling the dark cloud in your own life. Don't raise your hand. Don't point. Don't say anything. But you know it's true. You're feeling the dark cloud in your life. You're wondering, what did I do, God? I thought I did it all right. I got it every eye. I crossed every T. I did it right. I went from unsettled to settled and everything was going good and now I am so unsettled I don't know what to do. So Jesus sees this in his guys. As he sees it in his guys, he tells them this. He says, watch this. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Now the word heart is not just a boom, 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 boom. It is your mind, your will, and your emotions. 
your mind, your will, and your emotions. I can guarantee you whatever stays on your mind eventually will work through your emotions. If it works through your emotions, it will become part of your will. If it's in your will, and then your will all of a sudden to be through your mind, and then from your mind it goes to your emotions. They're also interconnected. So your mind, your will, your commotion, or your emotions. Now you can call it your commotions. He says, let not your mind, your will, your emotions be troubled. You know, I remember that day, sitting in the doctor's office, I went through all this stuff with Bethany, and the, the surgeons trying to burn out the stuff in their stomach because they said it's a sea which will burn it out. If somebody had a little deeper search, they'd have found out that it weren't just here, it went all the way back here, and back here, it went all the way up here, and it went up here. They didn't even see all that. All they saw was that one little spot. They focused on the small picture instead of the big picture. And then the nurse says, you need to go get this, or a nurse practitioner, you need to go get this checked out. You've got this eight by eight centimeter thing under your arm. You need to get it checked out. And so we go to Bover County Hospital, they do a CT scan, we come back and the nurse practitioner says, sit down. Says, I'm not sure what this is. It could be a bad uh, 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 a gland, or it could be just some kind of fatty tissue, or it could be cancer. We're not sure. And while we're talking, she gets called out of the room. And she comes back in and she says, radiation just called and said, get you to the ladies clinic. The Breast Imaging Center in Greenville. This looks like a tumor. And when she said that, Beth looked up and she said, and I remember this, I will never forget this. I'll go lay down at night and see this in my head. It's about the only time Bethany even showed that negative, negative, I'm afraid. This is about the only time. Tears started running out her cheeks. And she said, are you telling me I got cancer? And before I could get to her, the doctor or the nurse practitioner, she went and grabbed Bethany. And she held her before I didn't get to her. And she said, I'm not saying that. We just got to get it checked out. And in 24 hours, our world changed because then we found out not only did she have cancer, it was stage four. Malignant stage four, and it was all over. Wow. You talk about settled unsettling? Wow. The unsettling was there. All of a sudden, everything just changed. And I remember Linda and I got together and said, how are we going to tell her? And so we got together and we figured out a plan to tell her. We said, okay, Beth, then we're going to tell her what's going on and we'll take her anywhere she wants to go tonight. We'll let her have supper anywhere, whatever. And so we go to tell her that Beth, it is cancer. It's stage four and it's over all over your body. And Beth looked at me and her mama said, God's got this. I'm unsettled. Linda's unsettled, and Beth is going, God's got this. Made me feel like I was no longer a spiritual giant. She was. I said, you can go anywhere you want, get anything you want for supper, you name it, you can have it, take it in the movie. She said, can you just order me some, some uh, chicken fettuccine from, from uh, Domino's, have them delivered here. She said, why are y'all getting all worked up about it? God's got this. Wow. I felt like she was telling me what Jesus told his disciples that night. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. We have a washing machine. For some reason, this crazy washing machine, you put too much water, you <coughs> put too much in it. Somehow it gets out of balance. When it gets out of balance, you'll sit there and you'll think somebody's beating the house on top of the roof. Boom, 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 boom. I got there and look and see it's the washing machine. It's done throwing water everywhere. And it's got, so I had to watch it kind of monitor my loads when I put it in the washing machine because it's done going crazy. I'm gonna to to, now I'm gonna have to get it worked on because it can't handle the load. But the problem comes, watch this. When it's agitating, you gotta to listen good. When it agitates, it unsettles the load. And so when it spins, it tries to throw it off his wall. Jesus said, don't your heart be troubled. That word trouble is agitated. The same exact word that you use with a washing machine. The washing machine, 
if it gets, if it, the agitator will make the load shift. When the load shifts, if it shifts, then we got problems. Some of us in here, we're so unsettled, we're agitated. Something has got us, it's got our nerves, it's got our, it's got our mind, it's got our emotions, it's got our will, it's got us. And it's agitating us. Our, 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 our emotions, we, we just, we just, we don't know what, how to even feel anymore. Our, our mind, we can't even think. And our will, we just want to run somewhere and hide. But you can't. Because you're in that room. You've painted yourself in the corner. Life has painted you in the corner. You're stuck there. These guys were stuck as they thought in the middle of all this. And he says, you believe in God, believe also in me. Why did he say that? I believe part of it was because he said, you believe in God, he knows where you're at. He sent the answer. You believe in God, he's going to send the answer. Also believe in me, I am the answer. He sent me. Hold on. When life is agitated, when you go from uh, uh, unsettled to settled to unsettled again, it's so easy to lose your faith. It's so easy to blame God. It's so easy to have all these emotions. It is so easy, and it does happen. And I'm telling you, it happens more than you ever imagined. But people, you just have to let people sometimes vent. They just got to vent. And when they get through venting, then they'll be okay. But until they vent, they've got these emotions in them, and it's got their mind, their will, their emotions are all bottled up inside, and they're all agitated. And while they're agitated, they get unsettled. And when they get unsettled and get out of balance, you're in that spin cycle, and things are just making no kind of sense. Lost over, being shifted back and forth, and I'm throwing every which way. And Jesus said, God's got this, and He sent me to handle it. Then Jesus starts pointing to the cross. You say, Well, that's, that's all He said. You believe in all the Father, believe in me. No, now He's starting to point to the cross. Because in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you that's heaven. I go to prepare a place for you. We're thinking, well, he's just going to go to heaven to prepare a place. No. He's going to the cross first. And after he goes to the cross, then he's going to the tomb. And while he's in the tomb, Peter tells us that he went into hell. Not to suffer, but to take the keys from Satan. And to deliver those that believed in him before they died and carried them to heaven. You believe the Father, believe also in me, but not so I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I'm going to the cross. I'm going to the tomb. I'm going to hell. And then I'm coming back and then I'm going to heaven. And the final place that I'm at is where you're going to be. Wow. When your heart's agitated, when you go from settled to, to, to I mean, unsettled to settled to just pure out unsettled beyond from settling to settled to unsettled, number one, you got to believe in Jesus. You gotta believe there's an ultimate purpose for everything in your life. There's an ultimate purpose. The Bible says that God can bring, no matter what happens to us, He can bring good out of it. Every time. No matter how bad things were, I see God always, when you look in your rearview mirror, as you look in the rearview mirror, God always takes those hard, terrible times and He brings some good times out of it. There's always something. There's an ultimate good in it. You know, this is so wild. Some of y'all know the story of Bethany, how I was from seventh dad. And, and how they really couldn't find a place for her. And it was really hard, you know, in her first four years, five years, first four years of life with the abuse and all the stuff that was going on. And, and so, so uh, uh, and how they finally got exhausted trying to get her somewhere. And then they asked me, because I was going to court on her behalf, they asked me to take her. I said, sure. So we had to go through the process, the, 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 all this process. We became foster parents and all this stuff. And then they got, we got, and then they said, you can't foster any more kids because she can't see this. She cannot see kids coming and going. She's got to be settled. She's got to be settled because she's never been settled before. I said, okay, God. Well, 
And then, wow, life really got crazy because we found out about her abuse, found out about her face broke, and from the time she was five to the time she was 15, we were getting her face rebuilt. And then from the time she was 16, about the time she was 17, we had to get her nose redone. And so all this stuff was going on all these years of pain. I was in pit tension center first night. I got a call. Sister Boone normally this week, you know, gave me a little bit of time before she asked. This time she asked me on Thursday morning. She called me at 6.30 in the morning. And she said, Brother David, can you go to the pit tension center for me tonight and take care of those guys? I, I need somebody to stand in. Brother Rick can't go. And I said, sure. And so I go there, and there's four or five guys, and there's a lady, and we're all settling where we're going to go, A block, B block, you know, uh, 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 going over to the ladies. And I look back, and I just said, does anybody want to go to D block and F block with me? And here's what I hear. I will, Mon. That sound good to me, Mon. This is a guy from Jamaica. He goes, hey, Mon. Let's go down there and talk to the prisoners, man. So we go down and talk to the prisoners. And we come back and I'm restocking because I got books. I'm giving the guys books. And while I'm sitting there, the guy who knows nothing except that Bethany's sick. Because I he heard me tell the guys, and the guys are asking me all the time, how's your daughter doing? We've been praying for all this stuff. And, and so he heard about the knew that Bethany was sick. And that's all he knew. That's it. We sat down in the office for just a few minutes, and he looked at me, and he said, I know her life has been a struggle. I know that it was a struggle just trying to find her a dad. And said, I know it's a struggle for you now, because many dads would have already quit. Anyone she went to before would have quit by now. I'm going, wow. This, this, is, this is something. He goes, but you know what? God chose you. He said, because he knew you wouldn't give up on her. And he says, you know something else? He says, there's something inside of Beth. He says, I know her body's broken. I know this stuff's got her mind messed up. So she, her mind's broken. Her, 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 her body's broken. He said, but her spirit's 100% intact. And he said, her spirit's reaching up to God and reaching back down. And he said, you hold on because something special is getting ready to take place in her life and in y'all's life. Just one. And I said, man, I'm to myself, I'm thinking, well, I'm so glad I'm in the pit attention tonight. You see, when you're unsettled, when the plans have changed, matter of fact, they hadn't just changed, they blew up in their face. Their plans blew up in their face. Nothing they were expecting was going to happen. Mm -hmm. They go to the garden and even bring in their sword because they're going to protect Jesus when they get in the garden. And Peter pulls out his sword and cuts off Malchus' ear. When he cuts off Malchus' ear, the high priest's servant, when he cuts off his ear, Jesus, after that, told him, said, you better bring something with you because it's going to be rough over there. And you bring something with you thinking you're doing what Jesus said to do. And then Jesus says, hold, put your sword up. He that lives by the sword is going to die by it. And he reaches down and, and he, he takes the guy's ear and he sticks it back on his head and he goes, The people that are coming after him, he heals their wounds immediately. But the people that are serving him are still hurt. Huh? The guys who are coming to get him are taken to the cross. His ears cut off. Jesus reached out immediately and heals him. And then it's there goes, and they're all knocked down. He just goes to them. But the people that are serving him are still hurting. Oh, it doesn't make sense. 
All the plans have blown up in my face. It doesn't make sense. I was just settled, and now I'm unsettled. It doesn't make sense. Everything I have planned is no longer planned. Everything I thought was going to be is not happening. God, I don't understand. And then I see these people that can care less about you. You taking care of them. And I'm still hurt. What's happening? And Jesus said, look. Don't worry about dying here. I'm going to the cross. I'm getting ready. I'm getting things ready for you. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to get everything right. And I'm going to come back and take you to a place that you're never going to imagine. It's so awesome. The place is beyond compare. It's beyond thoughts that I've seen. Neither I've seen or you've heard. On the internet or the internet to the heart of man except through his spirit. What he prepared for. Jesus says, when your mind, will, and emotion is being torn all to pieces, here's how they're settled. It may not ever change down here, but up there, something special is going to be there. Something special. I was just thinking about it the other night. I was talking to Dad. We were talking about Mama and all the things Mama had gone through. By the time she died, she lost her legs all the way up to here. She had gone blind again. Her, her heart, or her, 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 uh, her kidneys were messed up. She was on dialysis five times a day. The peritoneal dialysis. And just things were terrible. And she had a sore in her back. She could stick her fist in. And when she exhaled that last breath of earth's air, and she inhaled that first breath of heaven's air, because her body was broken, but her spirit was intact. Immediately she stood before God in his presence. Her eyes she could see again. There was no hole in her back. There was legs on her as she walked before God. Wow. Isn't it awesome? Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. God's saying, I got this. Just like with Bethany. Dad, God's got this. So the day we went to we went to the doctor again. We went to uh Tarver to the lymphedema clinic. And her remember how swollen her arm was? And they had me wrapping these claws around. I thought it was like a ghetto mummy. Because they kept falling. And so so me being the engineer type, I said, I can fix this. And while I'm waiting for them to fix it, I'll go ahead and fix it. And so I got on I got on Amazon and I searched and I searched and I measured her arm, got the measurement arms, arm measurements and everything. And so I ordered her sling, I think she's wearing it right now. And it's so amazing, this is God, not me. This got nothing to do with that sleeve. But we were there and they said, you know what, Mr. Linton, total measurements. We were expecting to go down by now at least eight centimeters, maybe ten. She said, but it went down to eighteen centimeters. Eighteen forty nine. 18.9. And Bethany could just do like this to start with. And Bethany said, they said, can you move your arm? She said, how you want me to move? <laughs> and all I could hear was the angels going, glory, glory, hallelujah. I'm not through with her yet. Hold on. And all I could hear was Bethany saying, God's got this. God's got this. God's got this. Wow. And we go see the other doctor. Another doctor looks at her, the, the thyroid doctor, and she says, you know what? She says, how about you come back in five months? And then we go to the cancer doctor. He says, I tell you what, how about you come? We're going twice a week. He says, how about you come back in three weeks? He says, matter of fact, this is the best visit I've had in the last week. I'm so glad you came in. You made me feel so good, girl. And Beth and I, that's been walking out, and I said, how you feel about this business? And it's only Bethany can do. She said, didn't I tell you? God's got this. And either way, Dad, I win. Either way, I win. Wow. I can hear Jesus saying, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Because there's a better day coming. A 
better day coming. Y'all come up here and play something. A better day coming. This was totally unprepared. This was totally just off the cuff. But I'm telling you, it was burning in my heart. I had to let it rip. All day today has been a, a let it rip Sunday. Wow. God's doing something special.
way. John 14 tells us from Him, from Jesus, there's so. hope. If you're here today, every hip out, every eye closed, you've gone from settling to settled to unsettled, and you're needing some hope because your mind, your will, your emotions, they're, they're, they're in rags right now. They're four pieces, and you're trying to find some relief. But nobody's looking around, and nobody will see you. But you just put their hands so I can pray for you.
going to trust you. I'm still going to look to you. Because you got this. You got this. And either way, we win. Either way, we win. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you, Lord. Touch them all, God. Bless them beyond blessed. In the name of Jesus. You might tell y'all guys looking good today. With the exception of a few of you, y'all looking really good. I won't mention who they are if you have any doubts. Just look in the mirror when you go out.